after studying this module you should be able to know about the concept of mental illness stated by Maslow, learn about psychopathology highlighted by Maslow, understand the significance of Maslow's work in relation to counselling, learn about psychotherapy and other helping relationships, understand the helper's attitude, analyze the therapeutic life experience and know about the vision of psychology. Abraham Maslow is considered as the founder of humanistic psychology. Maslow was a radical thinker and he held a distinct belief about human beings. Even though maximum number of psychologists were preoccupied to understand the unusual as well as the unhealthy individuals, Maslow was engrossed in the typical as well as the hale and hearty. Regardless of undergoing a problematic infancy and himself being detected as being a psychologically unstable through a psychologist, he believed that human beings were generally okay. Maslow assumed that psychology was being seen from the wrong side of the end. However, having this viewpoint as well as working in the domain of maladaptive tendency he encountered a difficulty which was the apparatuses as well as techniques were not assisted in understanding the needs of the majority of reasonably fit in addition to those persons who were functioning normally. It was observed that he was keen in understanding the normal as well as the hale and hearty psychologically effective human beings. In his book, Psychology of Science, he described, and I quote, I assume it's appealing if the single instrument one has is a hammer to treat the whole lot as it were a nail, unquote. Maslow's main objective was to study mentally fit instead of psychologically or mentally unsound persons. Maslow asserted that the being needs or desires for subjective significance permit people, those who had acquired the maximum level in relations to Maslow's hierarchy, are able to discover sense in life as well as such people are capable to determine irreconcilable difference, for instance, like the independence as observed to deterministic, virtuous as observed to malicious, as well as subjective as opposed to objective. Maslow's assumption regarding actualization as specified in the previous module is straightforward as well as it consumes to an amount ignored as a personally created arrangement of concepts as opposed to an experiential science possibly for the reason that actualization comes about in the emotional jurisdiction of the person as an alternative of permitting for reflection by the senses. Furthermore, as well as importantly, psychology's emphasis on emotional unwholesome individuals takes place from a determination to resolve the difficulties accompanying along with mental ailment in contrast to Maslow's emphasis on suppositions concerning psychologically hale and hearty persons. Abraham Maslow's query was about psychopathogenesis. He questioned what makes people neurotic, for which he wrote that neurosis seemed to have originated because of a deficiency illness because it occurs on view of being deprived of few gratifications of necessities. Maximum number of neuroses comprises besides through further multifarious causes, unfulfilled desires for being safe, for belonging as well as identifying, forming intimate love affiliations as well as for admiration and regard. He pointed out that he had collected this information over the period of 12 years through his therapeutic effort as well as investigation in addition to spending about 
20 years on investigating about personality. Single understandable control exploration conducted was on the impact of replacement treatment that presented with numerous difficulties that when these insufficiencies were eradicated, illnesses have a tendency to dissolve towards a psychology of being. He supposed in observing at mental difficulties as the outcome of what he referred to as deficit needs, he understood when desires or wishes that be there not satisfied or frustrated grow into psychopathologies. It has been assumed these emotional difficulties may perhaps remain prohibited after evolving if these elementary needs were fulfilled particularly in initial infancy expansion. Abraham Maslow also transcribed in a chapter on positive psychology or orthopsychology in his book Towards a Psychology of Being that one should chiefly focus on wholly functioning as well as hale and hearty individuals. In addition, not sole deal with generally deficit individuals. It is consequently not in congruity to the subject matter as a psychopathology of the typical. It exceeds it as well as theoretically take into account all its conclusions in an additional comprehensive as well as wide ranging arrangement which comprises together the individuals who are deficient in addition to the hale and hearty. Abraham Maslow also commented that, and I quote, as far as motivational position is taken into consideration, fit persons have adequately satisfied their rudimentary wants for security, belonging, love, admiration, in addition to others, consequently, that they are driven predominantly by inclinations to actualization, referred to as continuing actualization of abilities, capabilities as well as aptitudes as contentment of undertaking or call destiny, purpose or whereabouts as a completer information of as well as taking off the individual's personal inherent nature as a constant inclination in the direction of agreement assimilation or combined effect within the individual. Mental illness and development of psychotherapy. Maslow assumed that each person is born with a determination headed for health and a predisposition to grow in the direction of self-actualization. Still Maslow recognized that human beings are capable of awful things. He supposed neurosis and psychotic behavior rises from need deficiencies. If one cannot gratify his basic needs, it leads to pathology. The pathology may possibly result in the form of a neurotic need. Maslow in 1973 in his book The Father Reaches of Human Nature regarded psychological illness as fallings away from full humanness, from the booming of human nature and not as a result of physical or stringently biological condition. He put forward, for example, that neurosis was associated to spiritual disorders, loss of meaning in life, having uncertainties about the goals of life, to grief and anger over loved ones, looking at life in a distinct way, to loss of courage or of hope, to despair over the future, to dislike oneself, one feels that one's life is being wasted or that there is no possibility of joy or love, etc. However, he recognized the likelihood that psychological disorders may occur because of some physical or biological factors. Maslow thought that social, educational, political, familial, etc. all factors play a significant role in the occurrence of psychological illnesses. This view allows Maslow to be optimistic about reversing pathologies and neurosis. In fact, he sees neurosis as preferable to apathy because unlike those who have given up hope, the neurotic person manifests a timid, ineffectual striving towards full humanness. 
he is specially hopeful about being able to restore children back to psychological health by applying his principles of the hierarchy of needs simply put if a child is lacking love he should be surrounded by love if another is lacking self confidence he should be shown respect etc the point is for maslow psychological illness does not have to happen and if it does there are ways to reverse its effect or at the very least to improve the situation humanistic therapies developed in the usa in the 1950s and the most non humanistic therapy is client centered therapy by carl rogers distinct to carl rogers therapy maslow embraces an eclectic approach to psychotherapy he does approve that the therapist should often be accepting genuine kind and concerned since these behaviors help satisfy the client's need for safety and belongingness nevertheless he believes is that there are too many individuals who do not flourish in a warm and friendly atmosphere for this to become a universal procedure for instance people with authoritarian personalities would most likely interpret kindness as weakness and distrustful individuals may well regard friendliness as a dangerous setup with such patients maslow mentions that the therapist should undertake the role of authority maslow also vary from rogers by preferring the use of freudian psychoanalysis with seriously disturbed patients particularly those who are too entangled in infantile perceptions of themselves and others to accept those need satisfactions that may be accessible Nevertheless in less severe cases briefer forms of therapy may well be sufficient the significance of maslow's work in relation to counseling maslow in 1970 points out that the self actualizing individuals he described are in fact correspondingly inadequate in a lot of ways a lot of these individuals he states every now and then are boring silly vain irritating depressed and to a certain extent capable of losing their temper these credentials are helpful since they specify that maslow's self actualizing people are after all humans without these qualification it would be difficult to look at the qualities listed without feeling slightly intimidated by them nevertheless what maslow suggests is that there are individuals who are capable of developing their potential to a very high level whereas at the same time remaining basically human this of course highlights the point that a lot of people on no occasion achieve this kind of development and in contrast there are others whose innate potential is inhibited for diverse reasons there are numerous reasons for this kind of inhibition and clients who come into counseling often display such kind of inhibition if one views the list all over again it becomes clear that the qualities maslow refers to are unusually lacking when individuals are distressed or emotionally upset as clients often are distressed people find it very hard to put up with uncertainty for instance they repeatedly lack spontaneity creativity and a sense of humor even the perceptions of reality may possibly be considerably distorted however acceptance of self and others may be lacking too autonomy and self reliance are without difficulty diminished when problem seems overwhelming and relationships with other people if not essentially the cause of complications may well suffer as a result of them appreciation of life experience is frequently reduced and there may be no interest whatsoever in widespread social issues transcendence or heightened experiences which are in any case related with psychological well-being may be non-existent for the duration of a time of disaster or emotional turmoil nevertheless understood in the work of both maslow and rogers is the assumption that individuals can be helped to overcome their difficulties so that some amount of self actualization can then be realized
As described earlier, Maslow supposed that all needs must be met if one has to ensure good mental health. If they are not, then a deficiency condition occurs and its consequences are neurosis, personality disturbance, psychosis, etc. As the humanistic counselor focuses on growth and actualization, he is often called a growth psychologist. Psychologists within this perspective view mental health in terms of growth, personal maturity and actualization rather than the absence of psychopathological symptoms. Formulation of the mature actualizing individual or the fully functioning person are used by the humanistic psychologist as a gauge of mental health. Maslow supposed that through a truly therapeutic relationship, we can help people to recognize their potential even though this is by no means the only route to self-actualization. Psychotherapy and other helping relationships Maslow thought his holistic dynamic theory did have practical applications, even though he did not have traditional clients. He considers most individuals by no means move beyond the stage of satisfying needs of love and belongingness. He thought that the therapist must cultivate an open, warm relationship with the client. It was assumed by him that acceptance within a clinical relationship will positively result in a healthy relationship even outside of therapy. For Maslow, the goal of therapy is to lessen the dependence on others and encourage the systematic need towards psychological growth and self-actualization. According to Maslow, psychotherapy had constantly existed in one form or another. These forms of helping comprise of shamanic healing, religion, the physician and the wise man or woman within the communities. All of these forms of helping share the capability to help people heal themselves. And Maslow summarizes what he considers to be the therapeutic feature of such relationships. One of the things which he points out that many individuals are helped by untrained workers who are still frequently effective in the work they do. Some of these untrained therapists consist of nurses, teachers, social workers, psychology graduates and so on. This does not indicate that counseling and therapy training is unnecessary. In contrast, it would inspire us to look more carefully at those skills and natural abilities which effective helpers do possess. In earlier modules, though we have previously deliberated on some of the qualities a therapist should possess, but still it is valuable to focus on Maslow's interpretation in this context. In Maslow's belief, clients seem to make more progress when the following aspects are present in the helping relationship. The helper displays genuine interest in the client and a readiness to listen to the client. There is evident concern for the client. The helper's efforts are clear to the client and which in turn makes the client feel that she is worthy individual. With the therapist, the client's feelings of vulnerability and anxiety are lessened and at the same time they feel safe and protected. The therapist at no time is judgmental about the client, that is, absence of being judgmental on the helper's part towards the client. The helper is acquiescent and accepting. The helper is truthful and positive towards the client. The helper is kind and genuine. The client perceives that the helper is on his side. The client senses the helper's respect. The helper's attitude. As discussed earlier, it can be observed that there is a close resemblance between attitudes discussed by Maslow and those suggested by Carl Rogers in the person-centered approach. If we examine Maslow's attitudes, we can understand that he also talks about Rogerian type situations which are embedded in terms such as interest, frankness, accepting, respect, concern and absence of being judgmental.
in addition the notion that the helper's partiality should be perceived by the client is one which undoubtedly repeats the rogerian concepts of unconditional positive regard and empathy at the same time maslow goes further and points out that it is not what is said or done by the helper which appears to make the difference but it is the presence of certain helper's attitude unconsciously transmitted which acts to encourage clients in the development of therapy the only skill which maslow talks about is that of listening this also is similar to roger's outlook that therapeutic progress result from the relationship between client and counselor and may have little to do with any verbal interchange which takes place between them there are evident suggestions here for counseling and counselor training since it elucidates the significance of self development and self awareness as basic conditions for admission to and progress through any training program it is believed counseling skills can undoubtedly be learned but personal characteristics are considerably much more difficult to obtain and sustain therapeutic life experience one should keep in mind and it's noteworthy that therapy and counseling are not the only helping understanding which assist in change when individuals are in crisis or emotional distress maslow had pointed out to the fact that helpers from various background are also effective in these situations and as well as in the helping relationship deliberated nevertheless maslow also highlights that certain life experiences are in themselves therapeutic among these are the experiences of friendship good marriage relationship education job satisfaction overcoming complications creative activities and family security yet maslow does acknowledge that certain clients particularly those suffer from long term and obstinate problems need the kind of help which only can be provided by trained therapists or counselors moreover he is apprehensive to point out that it should be probable to extend such training to those untrained professionals who already work effectively with clients this is in fact what is currently happening in many areas like social work nursing and occupational therapy teaching and church ministry maslow's vision of psychology maslow's idea of psychology was outside the conventional empirical scientific testing he believed those traditional approaches disallowed complete holistic awareness of human nature he also supposed that majority of theories had not concentrated on the higher functions of human beings that separate us from the animals undoubtedly people function at basic levels like animals but they have capabilities further than that according to him a theory which restrict itself to these survival skills under no circumstances would be able to elucidate the healthy high functioning human beings he also criticized theories based on study of neurotic people because he believed that understanding of the healthy individuals goes much more beyond than just focusing on the absence of disease some of the key principles which he followed are method centered according to maslow traditional science was absorbed on designing a method to test a condition many human experiences cannot be explained in such conditions as they are not so well ordered so this methodology is inadequate problem centered maslow suggested this approach as he felt that in this subject matter to be studied would be given higher priority than the methodology experiential knowledge is the terminology which has been given attention to existentialism it refers to how does each individual gather the knowledge she will from each experience 
This comprises the search for one's identity. Maslow sought to understand the decisive aloneness of the individual. This is evident from the fact that his own childhood was full of turmoil where both his parents were not appreciative of him and as a brilliant but unattractive and somewhat rejected child. Third force in psychology. Maslow is considered as the spiritual father of this movement. It was the force which came about after two famous approaches, psychoanalytic and behaviorist. This is what was developing out of the philosophical deliberations of the various humanists at this time. They wanted to reflect the existential question of life that higher functioning humans struggle with from time to time. Taoist science was Maslow's vision of testing existential experience. It would be subjective and experiential, not abstract. It would honor the subject rather than be detached and indifferent. It would be interactive with the subject, not contending on a false departure of observer and subject fusion knowledge at the same time as being most diverse from other scientific study it would specifically concern values he supposed this was the only way to effectively study the healthy individual the challenge for the researcher is to be open to very different values as he faces them in the subjects we often resist beliefs that we do not share personally a point form summary of this module is as follows Maslow's main objective was to study psychologically healthy instead of psychologically or mentally unsound individuals. Maslow said that neurosis seemed to have originated because of an insufficiency ailment, that it results because of the fact that certain needs are not gratified completely. Majority of neurosis comprises alongside with other multifaceted contributing factors, ungratified wishes for security, for belonging as well as identification, for forming close bonds in addition to for admiration and regard. Abraham Maslow supposed in looking at emotional difficulties as the outcome of what he referred to as deficit needs. He understood that needs which are not satisfied or are frustrated grow into pathologies. Maslow in 1973 in his book, The Father Reaches of Human Nature, regarded psychological illnesses. Maslow embraces an eclectic approach to psychotherapy. He does approve that the therapist should frequently be accommodating, sincere, caring, as well as concerned, since these behaviors assist in satisfying the client's need for safety and belongingness. Humanistic counselor is often called a growth psychologist. Psychologists within this perspective view mental health in terms of growth, personal maturity, and actualization rather than the absence of psychopathological symptoms. According to Maslow, psychotherapy had constantly existed in one form or another. These forms of facilitating comprise of shamanic healing, faith, the physician and the wise man or woman within the communities. All of these forms of helping share the capability to help people heal themselves and Maslow summarizes what he considers to be the therapeutic features of such relationships. Maslow goes further and points out that it is not what is said or done by the helper which appears to make the difference but it is the presence of certain helper attitudes unconsciously transmitted which act to encourage clients in the development of therapy. The only skill which Maslow talks about is that of listening. Maslow does acknowledge that certain clients, particularly those who suffer from long-term and obstinate problems, need the kind of help which only can be provided by trained therapists or counsellors. 
Maslow's idea of psychology was external from the conventional experiential scientific testing. He believed those traditional approaches disallowed complete holistic awareness of human nature.